Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Jersey Shore Pondscapes videos. My name is Chris. Today we are doing another video about ponds and water gardens, waterfalls, fish, plants, aquatic plants, the whole bit. Um, today's video is actually pretty important. It's something that I want to make you all aware of and uh, just talk about a little bit. And that's basically the danger of using chemicals around your pond. Herbicides, pesticides, garden fertilizers, um, and then at the end of this video we're going to talk about something else that uh, we need to be really careful about that's often overlooked. So stay tuned for the end of the video for that one. Um, but first off, you know, I want to talk about, you know, again, the dangers of using these chemicals, these toxic chemicals around your pond. Um, I want to start off by saying that usually if these chemicals get into your pond, it's usually a pretty massive, sudden um, die-off on your fish. Okay, it's not something that occurs um, little by little and it gradually gets worse. Um, it's something where one day you'll go out to the pond, your fish are fine, you're feeding your fish, they're swimming around, everything's happy and great. The next morning you go out to the pond and all your fish are dead. Okay, it's an event that occurs that causes this uh, tragic and catastrophic loss of fish. Okay, um, now water quality issues, right, can also cause big fish losses in your pond. pH, ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, uh, right, stuff like this. Um, the thing with this is that gradually these levels will increase. It's not always something that happens instantly overnight, all right? Um, now, sometimes you will get a big fish loss from, you know, uh, pH levels being really high or low, or ammonia levels building up, etc. stuff like this. But that's basically due to your own negligence because you should be testing your water periodically. And if you tested your water periodically, you would see that your levels are increasing. And some action should be taking before it gets really bad. Um, you know, just on that note, I, I really, sometimes I'm, I'm at, you know, the, the pond store or whatever, and I see people come in with a jar of pond water. Can you test my water? My fish are dying. You know what? At that point, <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. You know, if you own a pond, you should own a test kit you should monitor what's going on in your pond because by the time you bring your pond water in and they tell you your ammonia levels are sky high it's too late the damage has already been done okay now all you're going to attempt to do is try to salvage the last few fish that may still be alive all right so again you know ammonia ph nitrites nitrates things like that are usually um cause fish kills over a period of time. Now sometimes those levels can increase quite quickly, okay, but it's usually not a sudden dramatic event that happens overnight, okay. So please have a test kit. If you own a pond, you should own a test kit. It's not rocket science. It's not crazy chemistry. All you got to do is sometimes dip a strip in the water and match the color on the label of the of the can, the container. Or, you know, if it's maybe, you know, you get a little vial of water, you fill to that line and you put five drops in, shake it and test it and match the colors. It's not hard. So get a test kit. Um, all right. Having toxic chemicals, again, fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides get into your pond, that will be a catastrophic event, okay? That'll be something that overnight your fish will be dying, all right? Now, um, sometimes, just to be aware of it, whenever people call me and they say, you know, my fish are dying or they're laying on the bottom, some of them are at the top gasping for air, blah, 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 okay? Um, my first question is, what did you do to the pond in the last 24 hours? Okay, did anything occur with that pond in the last 24 or 48 hours? Um, and sometimes, you know, 
well, they'll say, no, I didn't do anything. You know, no, you didn't. But you had your landscape company come and, you know, spray all the bushes with, you know, okay. So something happened. Um, the other thing I just had recently, about two weeks ago, one of my clients called me up and said, all my fish are laying on the bottom. They're not coming up to eat. You know, what's going on? I'm really worried. So my question was, did you do anything to the pond recently? And the guy says, no, well, all I did was put in some algaecide. <laughs> all right, algaecide, right? Terrible stuff, all right? A lot of problems I see from people adding algaecides. If you overdose algaecides, there's a big problem. All right, that's for a whole nother video, but that's just another event that can happen to your pond that's toxic, that can cause fish kill. All right, so I wanna, um, get into a little story here all right um, about a client of mine i built a pond for probably 10 12 years ago i maintain the pond i have a service contract on it i go once a month you know i clean the filters i check everything out pond's been great all right so the pond's been up and running at this point at this story um let's say five six years all right no problem the pond's beautiful right mixture of koi some goldfish all different sizes, ponds running great, water's crystal clear. Um, also, just a little note as I'm saying this, clean, clear water does not always mean healthy water, okay? Chemicals are clear. Chemicals are not always color, okay? So while your water is nice and clean and clear, there can be a lot of problems in that water. So don't always think that clear water is healthy, safe water, all right? Um, okay, so this client's pond has been up and running. Everything's beautiful. It's been great. I maintain it all summer. I get a call right after um, Labor Day, early September. The guy says, my fish are dying. All right, I got some bunch of dead fish in the pond. A bunch of them are laying on the bottom. Some of them are up at the top gasping for air. Oh, you know, what do I do? So I go running over there, right? I test the water, everything's good. The pH, ammonia, nitrites, nitrites, everything tests out good. Okay, so what happened to this pond? Well, I don't know, all right? It's not my pond, I don't live there, all right? But some event had to occur that caused this, okay? So it was right after Labor Day. So he had a whole family over for Labor Day weekend. You know, everyone was there, they were feeding the fish, everything was great. All right, so what happened two days later, all right? So, like I said, I tested everything. The water tested out great. So my next big drastic move to try to correct all this, if there's something toxic in the water, we need to remove the water, all right? I pumped out probably more than 85% of the water, all right? Filled the whole pond up with fresh water, added dechlorinator to it, and luckily, most of the fish that were still hanging on survived, all right? The rest of the fall, the pond was great. Throughout the winter, the pond was great, no problem. Next spring, I go to open the pond. We get things running again. He had those fish that were still in there. They were doing fine. Um, later in the spring, he added more fish. I maintained the pond all summer long. It was beautiful, all right? No problems. Here comes Labor Day again, right after Labor Day, a day or two after Labor Day. He calls me, the fish are all dying again. Like what happens here? What is going on here? All right, same time as last year, same thing, right after Labor Day, all the fish are dying. So I run over there, I test the water again, everything tests out great. Drain half the three quarters of the pond again, fill it all up with fresh water, and save the, you know, whatever fish I could. All right. Now the homeowner's getting upset because, you know, I mean, honestly, he was probably getting a little mad at me. You know, I'm paying you all this money to take care of my pond and, and, and my fish are dying two, twice, two years in a row now. All right. So what am I going to say? Right. It's not my fault. <laughs> I don't live there. I don't know what goes on with the pond. I maintain it. I clean the filters. I check the water. I make sure everything's good. And it has been. Right. So what happened? Well, 
As I'm draining out all the water and the pond is refilling, I happen to be sitting there on his patio. So he has a whole pool, paver patio area. Um, off the pool, there's maybe 10 feet of grass and then there's a little mulch and here's the pond in the landscaping bed, okay? So as the pond is refilling, I'm sitting at the table and chairs there at, at his pat, on his patio around the pool and I'm just doing some paperwork and I'm looking down at the pavers and in between the cracks on some of the pavers I see these little white and little yellow balls. So I'm like, holy crap, right? I wonder, is that fertilizer? So I get up, I walk off the patio, I walk across the grass, I walk up to the mulch around the pond, and as I'm looking around the mulch and in the rocks around the pond, I'm seeing all these little white and yellow pebbles, little tiny pebbles all around. So I call them up. I said, by any chance, did anybody put like fertilizer or chemicals down on your lawn lately? He says, yeah, they come right after Labor Day and put down my fall fertilizer. Bingo. All right, two years in a row. Now, the funny thing with this, once I explained it to him and I told him that that's probably what it is because all these fertilizer pellets are all in the rock work and mulch around the pond, all right, it doesn't take much to get some of that in the pond to, to kill the fish, all right? so. I told him that, I explained it to him, and he was like really apologetic to me. You know, obviously it wasn't my fault, you know. Now the crazy thing is with that, I don't understand how landscapers today don't realize not to put these chemicals around the pond. Because 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I first started my business and started doing all these ponds, Ponds were a brand new thing and they were growing quickly and a lot of people were putting in ponds and getting into ponds, but the landscapers really didn't know anything about it. And I'll tell you, it, there was a lot of times when these landscapers come in and spread their fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, whatever, and killed all the fish. But they quickly learned that, you know what, if I'm going to somebody's house and I'm putting down fertilizer on their lawn and I'm making a hundred dollars but I'm killing three thousand dollars worth of fish <laughs> this isn't gonna be a very profitable day okay they learn quick you know when the homeowners started holding them responsible and paying for all the fish that they just killed so it's come a long way over these 25 years most of these landscape guys all know now if there's a pond you can't you can't put fertilizers and stuff down all right, so it really hasn't been that big of an issue, but occasionally here and there, you know, we run into it. All right, so um, that's my little, you know, fertilizer story. Um, now, um, herbicides, okay, a lot of people go out and they go to the Home Depot, they buy, you know, weed killer, you know, Roundup, whatever, and they have some weeds growing around the pond, they spray the weeds, and this stuff gets into the pond, <laughs> all right? These are really, really toxic, dangerous chemicals, all right? They're like organophosphates. They can kill the, your fish easily, all right? Um, so if you have weeds around the pond, all right, you better be pulling them by hand, <laughs> all right? Um, don't be spraying it. I don't care even if it's poison ivy. You, you put on some gloves and pull it out. You can't spray these chemicals into the pond if they get into that water, all right? Now, here's another little trick. Um, I'm gonna do a video here soon, probably in the next couple weeks, about um, different ways of using rock borders around your pond. And we'll talk a little more about that in this video. But when I build a pond, all right, I have, say, say this is my pond here, I build a shelf, um, you know, four or six inches underwater, four to six inches um, underwater, where I build a rock ledge, okay? So I basically put my liner in, bring it on the shelf, put all my rocks down on top of that liner. I pull the liner up behind the rock, all right? I put rock behind it and then cap it. The advantage of that is my liner is up. It's not laying flat on the ground. 
if my liner is up and somebody you know, gets some chemical weed killer, whatever, fertilizer in the lawn and we get a heavy rain and that um, you know, washes in around the pond, well, my liner's up here. It's not gonna wash in, all right? My pond is like a closed off system. Many, 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 many ponds, all right? People dig the holes, they throw the liner down on the ground, you know, around the pond, and they just put gravel or stone and stuff right on top of it. Now, <laughs> you have weeds growing in there, um, you have a lawn next to it, so put fertilizer down on the lawn, you get a heavy rain, some of that stuff can leach right down, come right in, come right over that liner and go right into your pond. All right, so really be aware of that, okay? Um, definitely, <laughs> all right? Um, herbicides, okay? Now, pesticides, all right? Here's another example. I had another client come in, um, call me saying, my fish are all dying, all right? So what happened? What happened to your pond? I don't know, I didn't do anything, I don't know, okay? I go over there, I look at the fish, I'm testing the water, the water tests out good, all right? Um, you know, what do I do? I start pumping all the water out of the pond. Obviously, some something happened here, all right? The guy's wife comes outside and says, what happened? What's going on with my fish? Do you know what happened? I said, I don't know. I said, but I gotta, I gotta change all this water, flush out all the water, and we're gonna start fresh, you know? And the woman says to me, we had a company come in and spray all the trees around the property for mosquitoes. Do you think that could have hurt them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, the company covered the pond with a tarp. So it protected the pond. Yeah, okay. Here's what happened. All right. Company comes in, they have this big, you know, machine with a high power spray and they spray all the bushes and trees all around the property, okay? They put a tarp over the entire pond area, okay? They really, like, they, they took care of it. They covered up the entire pond with the tarp. They sprayed all the bushes and stuff and came back later with, you know, when everything was safe and they took the tarp off, you know, when they left, all right? No problem, the fish were fine couple days later now all the fish are dying so what happened all right well it rained we had a good rainstorm all those chemicals that are on the leaves and the trees around the pond and the bushes all got rained on and all that dripped into the pond okay there you go so that's another thing you really need to be aware of all right so now the company comes in and they spray for all the mosquitoes. They don't spray any of the trees around the pond. They stay on the sides and stay away. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> so that's my rant on that. Um, one last final thing before I, I end this video um, that you know I wanted you to be aware of um, that I said I was going to talk about at the end of the video, and here we are. So I want to talk about people that get their houses power washed, okay? The chemicals that they use in power washing these houses, okay, can be like bleach, all right? They're, they're toxic chemicals, all right? Now, you would think, if I'm power washing a house over here and there's a pond right here, maybe you shouldn't use chemicals. All right. I get that question a lot from people that call me and say, hey, I'm having my house power washed. You know, what can I do with the pond? Um, you know, well, one, you got to cover it. All right. Because even though I I'm tell them, well, don't use any chemicals on the back side of the house near the pond. All right. But these chemicals get in the air. All right. And, you know, these these sprayers, these high power pressure washers, I mean, they spray like all over the place, right? So they could be working 20 feet away and the water can still be splashing in and around your pond. So make sure you cover, you know, the pond for one thing, but don't use any of those chemicals around the pond. Um, I had a client years and years ago who had a pond right off their deck. Well, they had their deck power washed. All right. Now, granted, the, the, 
deck wasn't over the pond, but the pond was probably, you know, five, six feet away from the deck. So the guy says, oh, no problem, you know, I'm going to power wash over here. I'm not going to spray it in the pond. Well, I guess some stuff got in the pond. <laughs> All right, all that spray, that mist and stuff coming off got in the water. So, um, you know, that's another thing that's really common, you know, having your house power washed and cleaned. Um, I don't care if it's organic chemicals, right, an organic pesticide, an organic herbicide, organic fertilizers, doesn't matter. Just because it's organic doesn't mean it's not toxic, okay? An organic pesticide or an organic herbicide is still a killer. It's still going to kill something. All right. Being organic simply means that it's just made with more natural products. All right. Mercury and lead are 100% natural. Plutonium is 100% natural. It will kill you. Right. So it doesn't mean it's not toxic. It doesn't mean that it's safe. All right. So always keep that in mind as well. Um, all right, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope I kind of gave you a little insights and some things to think about here. Um, you know, definitely um, keep that in mind and be safe around the pond because, you know, if it's dangerous for you, it's definitely dangerous for the fish. And it takes a lot less of, you know, these chemicals to cause a lot of trouble than you think. All right, a little bit of fertilizer gets in that pond and it can cause big problems. All right. So thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and take a look at all the videos I have here for you guys. There's a ton of videos on so many topics. Um, you know, whether you're looking to build a new pond, you have a pond, you have questions about something, um, you know, fish, aquatic plants, feeding your fish and filtration, the whole bit. I have a ton of videos here for you guys. So please take some time, you know, subscribe to the channel and, and look through all the videos and hopefully you'll find some information here that can help you out and, you know, help you enjoy and be more successful with your own pond. All right. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you back soon. Take care. Bye.